Hello everybody, Ted Davis here with another album review for you. Today we're going to be, I'm going to be reviewing an album that most of you watching has probably never heard, probably never heard before uh, by a band that most of you watching probably have never heard before. The band is Frigid Pink, the album is Earth Omen, it came out in 1972. I just got this yesterday uh, off of Amazon. Uh, so... Before I uh, dive into it, I'm going to show you the cover here. Really good cover. Let that sink in. Here's the back with all the band members right there. Here, uh, here's uh, side one right here. Side two. Different uh, actual paper sticker there for each of the sides. So this album in 1972 was, a, was a originally released off of Lion Records, which I believe was an independent label, and uh, it didn't sell well at all, it gradually faded into obscurity, um, and Lion Records went bankrupt uh, not long after this album came out. So uh, Repertoire Records, uh, for those of you who don't know who they are, they are a... I believe they're an independent label headquartered in Germany that is a reissue label and they specialize in reissues of albums by both popular and obscure rock bands and uh, this vinyl copy that I have that I hold in my hand right now uh, was released by Reptor Records in fact I actually bought them they were the ones selling it on Amazon uh, I bought I bought it from they were the seller they Repertoire Records was. So, Repertoire Records, if you're looking to get any good reissues of, you know, great albums by both uh, uh, well-known and obscure bands from back in the day, uh, go to their website, rep, rep, RepertoireRecords.com, and know that I'm not getting paid or anything like that to, to tell you this right now. They're just a really good, uh, really good source of... Uh, a really good reissue label that uh, reissues a lot of uh, great classic albums by both mainstream and, and obscure bands. Okay, so that's my that's my plug out of the way for Repertoire Records. Great record label. So, who the hell are Frigid Pink, and what did, what is the context surrounding this album? So, Frigid Pink were a band from Detroit, a four-piece. The original lineup consisted of Kelly Green... Uh, well, Tom Beaudry was his real name, but Kelly Green was his stage name on lead vocals. Uh, Gary Ray Thompson on guitar. Uh, Tom Harris on bass. Yeah, Tom Harris on bass. And Rick Stevens on drums. So, in 1970, they uh, released their self-titled debut album and had a top ten and had a hit and had a worldwide hit with a version of House of the Rising Sun that went top ten in a whole bunch of countries. They were this, this was an internationally successful song, or successful cover of a, of a traditional song popularized by the Animals six years earlier. Uh, their version was in 4-4 time as opposed to the Animals version, which was in 6-8 time. So, uh, that single does ex excruciatingly well. Or, I'm sorry, that, that single does exceptionally well. They do some touring. Uh, in 1971, they put out their second album, Defrosted, which uh, didn't really go anywhere. Uh, it charted in the Billboard 200, but it didn't chart nearly as high as their debut had. Uh, they did some more touring, and then uh, Kelly Green and Gary Ray Thompson decided that they're going to uh, dip out and they leave the band, and in comes John Wearing on lead vocals, uh, Craig Webb on lead guitar, and uh, Larry Zelenka, who had played keyboards on their... I don't know if that was on their... I don't know if he played on their debut. I know he played on their uh, their second album. I'm not sure if he played on their debut or not. He became a permanent member, joining on uh, keyboards and such. And then in comes John Wearing on lead vocals and Craig Webb on lead guitar. And they go to Eastern Sound Studios in Toronto and record Earth Almond. And uh, it gets released, gets critically acclaimed, 
Uh, they get well. They get. I should say they get signed to Lion Records, and then they go in and record this album in uh, Toronto, and it gets released. It doesn't go anywhere, and uh, they they tour. And John Wearing, I think, gets injured in an automobile accident or in a motorcycle accident or whatever. So here's replaced on vocals by a guy named Joe Baker. Tom Harris decides that he's had enough. So he leaves, and they get another bass player in to sub in for him. Uh, this revamped lineup of Frigid Pink releases the album All Pink Inside in 1975. That doesn't go anywhere, and eventually Rick Stevens, who by that point was the only original member left, decided to disband the band after that, and they got back together. And, uh, there's an, they got back together and broke up a few, a few different times uh, in the decades since. Um... There's an interesting article about uh, uh, Frigid Pink in, like, the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame or something like that. If you look up Frigid Pink on Google later, uh, that's, like, the fourth or fifth result that pops up. Uh, they have a really interesting article on them if you want to learn more about them. But uh, this is just me recounting, trying to recall information on the spot from what I've gathered on that, from Wikipedia, all that stuff. So so anyway, let's enough, enough history for now. Let's get into the music on this album. Um... I, first of all, I want to say, this album sounds like a Long Lost Uri Heap album. It really does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you listen to Larry Zelenka's organ work on this album, it sounds like Ken Hensley on, on those early Uri Heap albums. It really does. It's, it's almost shocking. John Wearing does kind of have a David, David Byron-esque kind of voice. I mean, Demon and, Demon and Wizards came out the same year as this album did, and you know, that was Uriah Heep's biggest album up to that point, uh, internationally, so, anyway, this sounds a lot like Uriah Heep, this sounds like, a, this could have been a Uriah Heep album. I, on my radio show down at school, I actually played, uh, a Uriah Heep song and a song from this album, side by side, and I had people asking me if that was the second Uriah Heep song, and I'm like, no, that's actually French and Pink, <laughs> believe it or not, so... Uh, anyway, so, side one, track one, Miss Evil. The aforementioned Larry Zelenka on organ. Just a great way to start off this album. Uh, great driving rocker, uh, with wonderful lead vocals by John Wearing. uh, Tom Harris and Rick Stevens keeping it solid. Da, da. Uh, really good guitar work by Crud Webb in the song Miss Evil. Just a really great hard rocker. To, that's a great way to start off this album once you put the needle down. Side one, track two, Sailor. Sailor is the name of the song. And it looks like my time is coming in. Yeah. Sailor. Great bluesy, dirgy song with a catchy chorus. A great guitar solo by Craig Webb in this song with Rick Stevens uh, chopping along behind him on drums with the ride cymbal and you know, doing the 16th notes. And oh man, just a great guitar solo by Craig Webb in this song. Sailor. It's excellent. Side one, track three. Probably my favorite song off this album. It's either this one or Sailor. The title track, Earth Almond. <laughs> part ballad, part hard rocker. Uh, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh Lord, look what we've done. Sung from the John Wearing takes the role of a protagonist. Talking about the apocalypse, I think, and the people's plea the town to be spared from the angry deity's wrath that is about to be brought upon their poor little town. Earth Almond is just such a great song. Just the the magnum opus of Frigid Pink, for all of you prog rock fans out there. 
this song sound could could have been a Uriah Heep song. It really could have. Uh, Earth, the title track is just is phenomenal. Uh, great vocal harmonies from uh, from some of the band members here. Uh, great drumming by Rex Stevens on that. Just the great hard rock section in the middle. Earth Open is great. Probably, like I said, probably my favorite song on this album. To close out side one, we have the song Lazy Day, which I believe was the single from this album. Uh, a great, moody, folky rocker. Just another lazy day. Great way to close off side one. Just laid back from all the bombast that came from the first three songs on this album. A great way to close off side one. Side one of this album is pretty phenomenal pretty spectacular. Side 2 is a little bit weaker, but that does not, the songs on here are not bad in any stretch of the imagination, but Side 1, man, these first four songs on, on this album, they're, that's pretty hard to beat, in my opinion, but anyway, Lazy Day, great way to, great way to close off Side 2. Ah, uh, Side 2, Track 1, Train Woman. Great bass line by Tom Harris that opens up the side, uh, great, 16th note drumming between with uh, Rick Stevens trying to simulate a train. It's bluesy. It's You know triplets all over the place It's great great vocals by John Wearing in this Side two track two uh, Here's where we start to get into the weaker material on this album like I said not bad just weaker than what came before Eternal Dream a good ballad good piano driven ballad with uh um, so a very dynamic drum performance from Rick Stevens in the second verse he just gets really really quiet you can barely hear him uh, but he's lightly tapping the hi-hat and the snare uh, great vocals by John Wearing uh, yeah this is a, a piano driven song but Eternal Dream is great too I don't like it quite as much as uh, Train Woman but uh, it, it belongs on here it's, it's moody side 2 track 3 New Horizon uh, a little bit of a funky tune, uh, probably my least favorite, for my money, probably my least favorite song on the album. Again, this does not make it bad, this is still a great song. Uh, it's just New Horizon, I don't know. I, I just don't like it quite as much as, uh, as Eternal Dream or Train Woman or, or any of the stuff on side one, or any of the stuff ahead, which we'll get to in a second, but, uh, it, it is a great song, it's funky, great focus by Wearing enough said right there. Side 2, track 4, kind of the very poppy tune on this album, Rainbow Rider. It's the shortest song on the album. Beatlesque, I like it. It's uh, it's very catchy, uh, very upbeat sounding, and uh, yeah, n nothing really much more to say about it. Uh, it's great, Rainbow Rider is. Side 2, track 5, and the last song on the Earth Omen album, Mr. Blood. Righteous Riff by Craig Webb on guitar, opening up the album. Pounding ride symbol by Rick Stevens during the uh, guitar solo in this song. Uh, think of it as the, maybe the cousin of Miss Evil. Kind of, kind of in that same vein, uh, you know, Miss Evil, Miss Evil being the, the raunchy hard rocker that opens up this one and Mr. Blood being the raunchy hard rocker that closes this album. They, these two songs kind of go hand in hand with one another, so I like how they uh, um, they close the song with the raunchy hard rocker. But Mr. Blood, very good vocal harmonies by the band members, a good vocal performance by Wearing Hair, a great, great drumming by Rick Stevens on this one. Uh, great riff by Craig Webb. Uh, Mr. Blood, yeah, great way to close off the album. Probably my third favorite on this album. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's probably three through five. It could be interchanged anywhere. So my my favorite song on this album is probably... I'm going to give the slight margin to Earth Omen, but I love Sailor quite a bit. I love every song on that first side. And then my least favorite song is New Horizon, but again, that does not make it a bad song. It's still a great song. Uh, for my money... My overall thoughts on this album, phenomenal. This is literally probably one of the best albums I've ever, the best rock albums I've ever heard uh, within the past year or so. 
um, when I started getting into obscure bands like this. Uh, Frigid Pink have a great discography. Their first two albums that came before this, uh, Defrosted and their uh, self-titled debut, I actually have their self-titled debut on vinyl, that's somewhere in the collection, uh, are very good as well. A uh, very good, solid performance by the original band on those albums, but you know what, there's just something about this album. Maybe because I love Uriah Heep, and this sounds like a long last Uriah Heep album, uh, maybe I just grew up, I grew a little bit more attached to it, but uh, um, this is uh, this is just a great release that I would recommend to anybody. Um, I maybe if you're looking to get into Frigid Pink, I probably wouldn't start with this one because uh, it's a little bit different to those albums that came before. I'd probably start with their debut, but I I love this album a lot. Uh, this has become a, an album that's held held a special place in my heart. This was probably the album of uh, my summer that I've been listening to all summer. I listened to it on Spotify a couple times before I got got this on Amazon, but uh, a very great listen. If you love Uriah Heep, you have no excuse not to listen to this album. Uh, just, just amazing. It really is. One of the greatest albums that you've never heard of before, in my humble opinion. Certainly one of the best albums I've had the pleasure of reviewing on my YouTube channel so far. So, that, uh, that about does it for my review of Earth Omen. Thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll see you guys with more content in the future. Ciao.